I have seven of the newest game improvement irons. I'm gonna put them head to head and I'll rank them from best to not the best. We're gonna take a look at the Callaway Paradigm X, the Titleist T350, the Ping G430, the Strixon ZX4 Mark II, the Cobra Aerojet, the TaylorMade P790, and the Mizuno JPX 923 Hot Metal. For those of you that have been here before, welcome back. And for those of you that are new, the way that I do my club reviews is I'm gonna get 10 hits. I'm going to delete the best hit and the worst hit. So I get a pretty good baseline on how the club is performing. We're using a TrackMan to get all this data. I'm using a Pro V1 RCT ball. We're in Calgary, Alberta. I have the TrackMan set to Calgary elevation, which is about 3,400 feet. And to pick a winner, I'm looking at a couple things. I'm looking at a combination of distance and dispersion. The first club I'm testing out is the Mizuno JPX 923 Hot Metal. This club actually won the best game improvement club of 2022. The life cycle of irons is a little different than driver. Every manufacturer is different. So just because the time of year, I'm including this because it's still part of the current Mizuno lineup. This is still what Mizuno is offering in 2023. Feels so good, man. Just how I remember it. Something that has changed from my last video 2022 to this video is last year, all the fitting irons were six irons. That was kind of the standard even back like 15 years ago when I was selling golf clubs. Now everything is a seven iron. I find seven irons a little bit more forgiving when you're doing a fitting. They're a little easier to hit. It's kind of like that middle of the road club. So all these irons I'm gonna be hitting are seven irons. I did listen to all you guys, all my subscribers and the people in the comments that I'm using the same shaft for all but one of these clubs. Six of these seven clubs, I'm using my fitted shaft. This is the Nippon Modus NS Pro. It is a Tour 120 X-Flex. I'm using this in six of the seven. The one club I'm not using the shaft in is Callaway. Callaway wanted to send their own fit cart. I don't have the fancy adapter, so I have to use the stock option for Callaway, but everything else is gonna be the same with this shaft. One of the things I'm looking for in a game improvement iron is forgiveness. So the Mizuno feels really good up and down the face and it feels really familiar. So far, so good. Something I thought would be fun for this series on finding the best game improvement iron is once I rank all of them, I'm gonna bring in like a mid to high handicap player. He's gonna hit the exact same clubs I did and we'll see how they rank on his list compared to mine. Just to see if there's some crossover between like a decent player, I'm playing to about a scratch and someone that would be like a 15-ish handicap, which would be more realistic to someone picking these irons and playing them. Some of you guys might be looking at my carry distance, my total distance and being like, that's such bullshit. That's a classic golf influencer jacking up the elevation to get big numbers. This is realistic numbers for where I live in Calgary. We're in the mountains, elevation is high. Like I told you, like 3,400 feet. And these lofts aren't traditional seven iron lofts. Because these are game improvement irons, they are a little bit stronger than say like a player's iron that I would play. So for reference, the loft of this seven iron in the Mizuno is 28 and a half degrees. The loft in the irons that I use, Titleist T100s is 34 degrees, but these game improvement irons still go very high. When game improvement irons started de-lofting their clubs, they went pretty low. They were just like low runners. Players needed to get some height and all of these manufacturers have since moved weight to the back to help get the ball up. And I'm seeing that a ton with this Mizuno. It's going high, landing soft, and it's going far. Pretty good combo. That felt buttery, buttery. Oh, there's my worst one. Usually save my worst for last. Okay, well that's a good sample size. All right, let me walk you guys through the data to see how the Mizuno performed. Okay, this is why I like removing the best and the worst. If I look at just my down the line data, I clearly had one outlier. My last hit, I always try to hit it the best and I typically hit it the worst. I had this kind of smother, chunky pull. It didn't feel very good. And on the shot list, you'll see that it was by far my worst hit. Carrying 177, rolled to 190, was just like a terrible contact. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the rest of my shots, how tight is that dispersion? I typically play a cut. Let's go take a look at my dispersion here. So everything for the most part was carrying around 200, even just over. I have maybe just one that missed the fairway. So if I'm hitting eight to nine out of 10 in the fairway, the dispersion is great. The shaft obviously works well for me. That's why I'm using a fitted shaft, but everything was awesome. It felt really good off the face. And then here's my one outlier. I told you I'm gonna delete my best and my worst. So there was my worst one, obviously that 190 guy, kind of that pull hook and my best. I had this guy 212, 
206 carry. Anything close to 206 carry? Doesn't look like it. So this was definitely my best one, kind of like a nice high cut. So I'm gonna delete that as well. So here's my new averages. Average carry 190, 198 total. So I'm averaging about eight yards of roll with the Mizuno. Overall felt really good. And my spin was about 6,400, which is kind of right where I wanna see it. So overall really impressed with the Mizuno. This next club I'm hitting is the TaylorMade P790. And it's kind of a game improvement club. The real game improvement club in this lineup is the Stealth. I also included that in my 2022 video. I don't wanna keep doubling down on previous clubs I've reviewed. It's categorized as like a player distance club. The loft on this iron is 30 and a half degrees. It's still lofted down compared to my current 34 degree seven iron. I really just wanted to include another one of TaylorMade's club that they offer in their lineup. It's still in the game improvement iron realm of clubs. This is also a club I haven't hit yet. It looks super clean. I kind of like this like satin silver. It's not super shiny and I like that. At a dress, it still has kind of like a chunkier top line. So I find that it does look very similar to that Mizuno I just hit. That felt good. Yeah. Something pretty cool out of the gate that I'm noticing is I was expecting the TaylorMade to not go as far as the Mizuno out of the gate because it has more loft. What I'm finding with the TaylorMade is that it's spinning a lot less. So I might not be hitting it as high and I'm getting more rollout. I'm averaging so far about 10 yards of rollout when the Mizuno was only like five, six yards. So spin comes down, distance actually improves. I find the sound quite impressive in this P790. It sounds like very clicky, almost like a ping-like. I'm a big sound guy when it comes to picking clubs and I find that these sound really good. It does have the speed slot on the bottom too. So I'm not sure if that's helping sound or not, but I just realized that it still has the same speed slot like the Stealth did as well. I find these P790s very easy to hit. I find they're very forgiving up and down the face. I was thinking, oh, maybe it's more of a player's club. Maybe I have to be a little closer to the center of the face. I've been up and down this club face and I'm getting really good results. So from a forgiveness standpoint, I'm saying that it is as forgiving as the Mizuno had been. Okay, first thoughts after hitting the TaylorMade, it felt really good and I didn't have one shot that I can think of that felt like a bad shot. Looking at my tracers, I had some more go left than I had previous with the Mizuno. Let's look at my dispersion here. Super tight, oh my God. Look at that dispersion of one, two, three, four, five within just a couple of yards and they're deep too. That's well over 210, that's about 215. So I'm really surprised how far those went. This dispersion here is awesome, but I have three outliers. So I think last time on the Mizuno, I only had one guy in the rough. Oh no, and I deleted that other one. So two in the rough, but here I have one, two, three, but distance wise, extremely consistent. So if I was on like a par three, I have like that 215 distance, I could comfortably pull my seven iron and be pin high. So dispersion, I'm actually quite happy with. Let's, de let's determine the best and the worst. So best, I actually had, holy smokes, I had three go 220. So one 320 was a pull, another 320 was a pull, but I had this guy here, 320 total, smack in the middle of the fairway. Unfortunately, I have to delete that one. And let's find my worst, 213 and pulled left. So this was my worst, I'm gonna pull that one out. Okay, so here's my new averages. Averaging 211 carry, 220 total, but my spin was way down. So again, that's why the ball's going so much further is that TaylorMade just seems to be producing less spin, less spin, more distance at my club head speed anyway. Potentially when I get my new test subject in to test out the game improvement clubs, he might have way less spin and these clubs might act differently for him. But in my testing, this is just the results that I'm getting. Let's compare these to the Mizuno. So Mizuno average carry 198, where the TaylorMade 209. Wow. I was not expecting that big of a difference, but look at the spin, right? Spin 6,600 with the Mizuno or TaylorMade 6,000. So yeah, it's definitely gonna go further, but that's interesting for the test. Dispersion wise, I think I gotta give it to TaylorMade too. Look how tight that dispersion was. To have four that close together, and Mizuno was close, but I would say that the distance dispersion is not nearly as tight as 
the TaylorMade spin. Yeah, another stat that I'm looking at too is the landing angle. So this is 47.6 degrees for the Mizuno. So still coming in landing soft, as is the TaylorMade. So the TaylorMade's going further, even though it is higher lofted. I'm getting less spin and the dispersion's pretty tight. So that was a really good performance out of the TaylorMade. A lot of times when I'm talking to you guys, you might say, oh, the lofts are jacked and that's why you're hitting it so far and it's rolling and it's staying low. That's not necessarily the case. These are still going really high and landing soft. So to have a seven iron that's landing like 209, relatively soft is a pretty cool weapon to have in the bag. So very impressed out of that P790. Let's go on to the next one. Moving on, we got the Titleist T350. This looks relatively familiar because I'm playing the T100s, but at a dress, it does look much chunkier. So for me that I'm used to a player's iron or even closer to a blade, this looks big, but it looks just as big from the top line as the Mizuno and the TaylorMade. The loft on this T330 comes in at 29 degrees. I find it just interesting that all these game improvement irons are different lofts. You think that there would be one set regulation for all these lofts. They're all a little bit different, but let's see how it performs to the Mizuno and the TaylorMade. Well, so far it's keeping up. Sound-wise, I find it very comparable to the TaylorMade and the Mizuno. Maybe this is like just the highest pitch iron so far. Maybe like the most kind of pingy or tingy, but it sounds good and so far it does feel really good across the face. My first flare. I don't think that was the club's fault. This one's also low spin. Yeah, definitely not my best session, unfortunately. Okay, let's look at the data on the Titleist. This is why I find hitting different clubs so fun. I'm a huge Titleist guy. I have Titleist in my bag. T100s were by far the best irons for me at the time when I hit them. Unfortunately for the T350s, it was my furthest dispersion. I had almost as many left as I had go right. And if you look at those tracers just compared to the TaylorMade and then the Mizuno, obviously it wasn't my tightest session. I'm well warm. I've now gone through two different clubs. This is my third. I should be swinging as good as I have been. And for whatever reason, I just wasn't able to keep the ball as tight as the previous irons. Let's look at my dispersion here. So dispersion distance looks relatively consistent, but it could be a lot tighter. Again, this is the exact same shaft that I use in the other clubs. Just for whatever reason, the way that this club set up for me wasn't giving me my best results. Let's compare these. Actually, no, let's find the best and the worst. So it's like I had this huge pulley one 230. Could you classify that as the worst? Probably not. A couple 208, that's middle of the fairway. 209 in the fairway, 215 left. I wanna find this guy here. 202 in the fairway versus like this one's in the trees. This yeah, one was I'll like, take so I'm actually going to take, even though this one went the furthest, I'm going to take that out as my worst. It was like a big smother pull. My best was probably this guy up here. So 218 just like, yeah. looks like it's just in between the first cut and the uh, fairway. Let's call it fairway for sake of argument. So I'll delete this guy. So like as far as distance goes, it was very consistent. So again, forgiving up and down the face, but I, it just wasn't giving me as tight as results as the other two. Let's compare the averages. Average carry 199 with the Titleist. TaylorMade was 209, so like 10 yards difference, 11 yards difference. And then is very comparable to the Mizuno. It was actually going further than the Mizuno. 201 versus 198. And the total 205, it was rolling out further. So it's still getting about 10 yards of roll. So far though, comparing the three, I'm still looking at the TaylorMade as my best session so far with the game improvement irons. All right, we're still moving. This is the Ping G430. If you guys are new to the channel and you haven't seen my videos before, make sure you smash subscribe so you can see more of our videos. Or if you've seen a bunch of my videos and you've yet to hit subscribe, please hit subscribe. It really helps us grow the channel. Okay, G430. This top line actually looks the thinnest of all of the game improvement irons that we've hit so far. What I find with the Ping is that for me visually, it just looks to have the most offset. For me personally, I don't love looking at a ton of offset. I didn't notice the offset on the other clubs, but for whatever reason, looking at the ping, it just looks to like there's a little bit more offset than the others. Ping is giving you a ton of options if you think you're in the market for pings. They also have a high launch option if you have troubles getting the ball in the air. I do not have that problem, so I'm hitting just the regular G430. Ping is giving you a lot of options, and that's kind of a cool thing that they let the consumer pick. The loft on this G430 is 29 degrees, so I think that's the same as the Titleist that I just hit, and it's kind of right in that ballpark of all the other game improvements, but it is 29 degrees. That felt good. 
In years past when I've tested ping clubs, I felt like ping always felt and sounded the most unique or the most different from kind of the rest of the clubs. So far, this sounds and feels as good as everything that I've hit, but I just don't love the looks of it. Visually, it, it doesn't really speak to me, but it's performing really well. So if you really like the look of these, you gotta hit them. Even if you don't like the look of them, you gotta hit them. Like that, man, it was like butter. Skinny. Forgiving. Wasn't the center of the face, still went 204, 216 middle of the fairway. Pretty good. Okay, now that I can see all my dispersion, I felt like my session was tighter than this is showing me. I still have some left, some right. Overall though, it felt good. Let's look at dispersion. Interesting. That's the most unique dispersion that we've had yet. It looks like a pretty big gap between my furthest and my shortest, but I gotta delete my best and my worst. My worst, I would say, is this guy that's almost OB, 228 total, delete you. And my best is probably this one, 220 in the fairway. That's probably my best. Now we got a pretty good baseline. I still had three miss the fairway, but I was pretty happy with the majority of these. So to have five close to the center line, the distance was all within reason. I thought that was a really good session out of the ping. Onto the Cobra Aerojet, I'm excited to hit this. I've always been a Cobra fan. I remember in my 2022 video, these were going the furthest, but they were the lowest. So, and that was the LTDX model. So it'd be interesting to see if the Aerojets are going higher. Let's see what type of performance we're getting. Right off the bat, I'm noticing that I can feel more off-center hits than maybe I could with some previous clubs. That last one there, I hit it dead center on the screws and it might have felt better than all the ones that I hit prior. So I'm finding that the feel up and down the face feels the most different than maybe the competitors so far. Interesting feel up and down the face so far. <laughs> 237 iron, crazy. It kind of annoys me that these don't necessarily feel the best compared to the other ones, but they're going a mile. Like 220, 230 was the previous one. Interesting. These probably aren't landing as soft as maybe some of the other clubs that I've hit because they're higher lofted. But if you need distance, if you need that extra rollout, these Aerojets are gonna be a great option for you. Okay, let's find those outliers. Pretty good dispersion. I don't know why I'm favoring the left side today. Typically my miss is like a flare to the right. I haven't golfed for a couple months, so for whatever reason, I seem to be kind of just turning it over a little bit. Dispersion, really good. So the fact that I'm seeing more balls at like the 220 mark and beyond is pretty crazy, especially for a seven iron. These things go far. So like I said, if you need distance, like these are a really good option for you. Let's find those outliers. This guy, I do not like, short and left. Let's delete that. And then my best was this guy out here. What was my best? 218 carry, 231 total. So I was not seeing that type of rollout, the 15 yard rollout, anything beyond 10 yards of rollout I haven't really seen yet. The Cobras are all rolling out a bunch. Gotta delete this guy. 231 seven iron, come on. Overall though, I was happy with that session from a feel standpoint. The arrow just didn't feel the best compared to basically all three clubs that I hit prior to it, but the results kind of speak for themselves. The fact that they're going further than everything else, dispersion is still relatively good. And like from a price point standpoint, these are probably like the best value clubs. So overall, I'm happy with the session. I think just from a feel standpoint was the only thing maybe letting me down a little bit. Next, next. Where is it now? Strixon ZX4 Mark II. Strixon and Mizuno were the best selling irons this year. Oh, really? Oh, wow. All right, next iron is the Srixon ZX4 Mark II. I was just talking to the fitters here at Modern Golf in Calgary, the fitting facility where we film, and they just said that the Srixons and the Mizunos are the two highest selling irons that they have. I've been a big fan of Srixon the last couple of years. When I did my driver bracket series, the I think it was the ZX5 LS, like blew me away. It was like the most accurate driver by far. People are swearing by Srixon irons. Let's hit them and I'll let you know how they feel. The lofts of these Strixons are 28 and a half degrees, so right in line with everything between 29-ish. The Cobra, I guess, was the one exception at, I think it was 26 and a half. Whew, again, feels good. 
I'm noticing relatively low spin out of the gate. It's gonna increase my distance. So that one there, like a 224 total, that's big. But the rollout again is 10 yards. I ideally wanna have it maybe just less than 10 yard rollout. Feel wise, it feels like they have a pretty big sweet spot. I've got some close to the toe, close to the heel. Overall, it feels really good. When you do hit the center of the club face, it is just like butter hitting through that ball. Even though these are going a mile, I'm looking at the landing angle with them landing at like 47 degrees. They're still landing relatively soft and they're keeping up distance wise with the Cobra. That's like almost the perfect combination. That's pretty cool. It's probably my worst hit yet. Toe flare. I knew right as soon as I hit that. Not much to not like in that session. Let's look at my uh, averages. That session there felt really good. I had the consistent shot shape that I'm used to, kind of like that bleeding cut, high cut. I didn't have any go left with me. So, so far for my game, I really like that I didn't go left. I try to take out one side of the golf course. Let's look at my dispersion. I found the fairway with all 10 hits. That's the first time out of any of these clubs I found the fairway all 10 times. Gotta find the worst and the best. The worst is this one, which is close to the rough, still not in the rough, went 197, 208, I gotta delete that. That's pretty cool though, that was my worst. And my best, it's probably this one, this little line, you can see where the uh, 220 line crosses vertically and horizontal, that's like center of the fairway. This one I think went the furthest and is closest to that line, so I'm gonna delete that one. Just 224 total. Look at this line here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all in the fairway, all on a straight line. Like who doesn't want that? That's cool. One more, uno mas. Uno mas. Callaway Paradim. Last club we're hitting before we look at all the data and find the winner is the Callaway Paradigm X. Now this club is the only one that I can't use the same shaft because Callaway wanted to get fancy, send their own fit cart. They don't have the exact shaft that I was using. I'm using the closest one, which is a Project X rifle shaft. It's extra stiff, so hopefully I can get very similar dispersion results as the previous clubs, but we won't know till we hit it. So let's get right at it. It's pretty hot out of the gate. The loft on this paradigm is 27 and a half degrees, so it's very close to the Cobra. So it should be relatively low spin and it should be going far, far rollout. My last one there was just like 13 yards of rollout. Still not exactly what I'm looking for, but it is a very far iron. If you want distance, so far this is a good option. How far does your uh, seven iron go? Oh, 243. Visually, I find the Paradigm to look the thickest at a dress. It's got a big top line and I can actually almost see the cavity behind the club. Looking at it, it just looks the biggest. For me personally, I don't love the look of a big club, but some of you guys might prefer looking at a, a bigger club head. So that's kind of personal preference, but that's just kind of what I notice. That wraps up all my testing. Now we can dive into the data and find out which one of these clubs is gonna win. So we just finished Callaway. We took out my best and my worst. Looking at the dispersion is nowhere near as tight as some of the other sample sizes that I had. A big thing that I'm looking at is the distance from my best and my worst or my furthest and my shortest. So I look at this guy here, the shortest is about 215 all the way up to like 242. I can't have that big of a gap in my clubs. And for the most part, they all felt good. So if I hit it and think it went good, is it gonna go 215 or is it gonna go 242? So if I can compare the distance total with those other ones that went really far, like the Aerojet. Aerojet went 222, Callaway went 224 in the testing. So again, if you want a club that goes far, this Callaway and the, the Cobra are still really good options, but for me and for how I'm ranking this, they're gonna be near the bottom. What I like about the Aerojet is that I had way tighter dispersion. So look how consistent this was. I'm all the way between kind of like that 218 to 226, 227. I can have that 10 yards of dispersion, but I can't have that like 30 yard gap. I just can't have that. Some other ones that kind of come to mind that I think will be lower on the list is Ping I was thinking of. Again, I have this big distance uh, gapping. So like 202, 201 versus 226. Like I can't have 25 yards in distance of dispersion. I felt like I had a really good session with the ping, but again, I still have three or two and a half out of bounds. I just don't think that's gonna be as high performing as some other ones. Some ones that I like right off the bat were the Srixon. 
I had every, I had all 10 of my shots in the fairway. So for me to have to delete a best and worst that are still in the fairway, from a playability standpoint, like Srixon is to the near the very top of my list. Look how consistent these are. I had seven all within like that 223, 224, 224, 223. Like look how consistent that is with my outlier being 208. So to go from 208 to 224 is still a pretty big gap, but it's only one out of the eight, right? Some other high performing ones were the uh, TaylorMade. I mean, I remember being really impressed with the TaylorMade out of the gate. Those four, this collection of four is the closest dispersion I think I had out of everything. I have a really good gapping or a decent gapping, I would say. So to be that tight with a seven iron at 217 yards, 218 yards, 216, and then the dispersion gap between the two, I have this guy at 210 all the way to 220. So that's only a 10 yard gapping distance. I can live with that. that that's realistic numbers. Titleist, I found the distance to be um, very even across the board. So this might actually be the best dispersion gap that I have. 202 to 217, uh, about 15 yards between the two. But looking at it, for the most part, they all went the same distance. But I had a couple left and a couple right. So dispersion wise, wasn't the best. I think Titleist is gonna be middle of the pack. Mizuno, where we started last year's winner. Very consistent. I had a good gapping into the middle of the fairway. One little outlier just in the first cut, not a big deal. This is gonna rank near the top. I don't think it's gonna rank number one. Felt really good, looks really good. I would be happy playing these clubs. I'm just thinking that there was one club that's actually outperforming all of these. So let me think on how I wanna rank these. I'm using my data a lot as my guidelines that I can't ignore data, that just, is illogical. I want to take into account looks, feel, sound, price. These are all the things that I think of when I'm buying clubs. So I'm going to take those into consideration with the data. Let me come up with a list and I'll tell you how I'm ranking these. I came up with a list, it wasn't easy. Again, this is my list. Feel free to rip me apart in the comments section, but let me tell you how I ranked these clubs. Coming in the seven spot is the Callaway Paradigm X. Looking at my dispersion, I was talking about the distance between my shortest hit and my furthest hit is like <laughs> 33 yards. I can't have that. The other thing to consider is the price point. These come in at $13.99 US. They are tied for the most expensive club that I tested and the results that I got were nowhere near less expensive clubs. So that's why the Callaway is coming in the seventh spot. Coming in at the sixth spot is gonna be the Ping G430. Very similar reasons as to why I ranked the Callaway near the bottom. The distance between my shortest at 201 and the longest at 226, 25 yards, I just can't have that in my game. I did have some tighter dispersion in the fairway. There's two side by side, three, four, five in the fairway, but still three outliers to the left. These come in at 1200 bucks US. For me personally, something that came into consideration is the looks. I just didn't love the look of the pings. If I'm gonna be buying new clubs, I wanna make sure that I'm excited when I go to pull a club out of my bag. The pings just didn't really do that for me, and then the performance didn't necessarily back it up. They did feel really good, but Based on all those considerations, it's coming at the six spot. Coming in at the five spot, this kind of hurts me a little bit because I am a huge Titleist fan. I play Titleist T100s. What I loved about them was the consistency of the distance. Looking across the board, I didn't have that huge jump in distance between my shortest and my highest. What I did find though, was that I had three outliers to the left. I had one outlier kind of up near the sand. One was short right. I was just expecting tighter dispersion out of the Titleist. They felt really good, but when I play into consideration the price point for what the results were, that's why I kind of have to rank it just in the middle of the pack. Now on the flip side, one of the more inexpensive clubs that we tested was the Cobra Aerojet. These come in at about a thousand bucks US and I was overall really impressed with the performance of these clubs. I love this dispersion. Anytime I get a relatively tight circle, that makes me happy. These were going far. They weren't landing as soft as I had hoped. They were rolling a good amount, about 11 to 12 yards of roll, but I can live with this dispersion. Sure, I had two left, but the majority of all my balls were to the left. I didn't have a big flare to the right. I didn't have a big pull hook. From a price point consideration, the dispersion that I got, they look really good. I think they look pretty cool. I like the color combo, kind of a little bit of carbon and some blue. Overall, I really like these. They're coming in at the four spot. 
Okay, we're into the top three. So we have Mizuno, Strixon, and TaylorMade rounding out the top three. This was tough for me. You could argue any one of these to be the number one, number two, or number three, but let me tell you how I got there. Coming in in the three spot was the TaylorMade P790s. The biggest reason as to why these are ranked in the three spot, for one is the price point. These come in at $13.99 US, so they are tied for the most expensive clubs out there, and I had two big outliers to the left. The positives that it had going for why you could consider it in the two or even the one spot is this was the tightest area of dispersion I had in my entire session. You have basically four balls on top of each other and the distance difference is only two yards. Those four shots were incredible, but I have to take into account the other four. I had one, two on a very similar line. The distance difference was about eight yards, but the biggest thing keeping this in the three spot is that those two outliers to the left and the price point. Okay, only two clubs left were between the Strixon and the Mizuno. I actually find it hilarious that the best selling clubs here that the fitter told me was Strixon and Mizuno, and that's what we came down to in my conclusion. Coming in at the two spot, I have the Mizuno JPX 923 Hot Metal, which was my last year's winner. This is still an amazing performing club. There was no way that this club was gonna be in the five, six, seven spot. There's a reason why it won last year. Looking at my dispersion, I have a relatively tight circle. They felt so good. I found this to be the heaviest club. If you prefer heavy clubs, this would be a great option to start with. Looks really good, but something that's really jumping out is the price point. These are actually the most inexpensive clubs or the least expensive coming in at 962 US. The fact that you can get this good of a club for this price point is mind blowing. Looking at my dispersion, I had a great uh, gap between my furthest being at 212, my worst at 197. So not the most ideal distance gapping, but when I factor in price, looks, feel, sound, and data, I would be crazy not to have this in my top two. You could argue it to be the one spot. That means the winner of the 2023 Game Improvement Iron is the Srixon ZX4 Mark II irons. I had 10 out of 10 of my shots go into the fairway. As a golfer, one of my wishes would be keep all the balls in play, hit the fairway, and I did exactly that with the Srixon. Felt good, looks good, price point is $11.99, so it's not the highest price point, it's certainly not the lowest, but I found it to be a happy medium price point, especially for the results that I got. Now that I have this list of how I ranked the 2023 Game Improvement Irons, I'm gonna bring on a test subject in my next video to see how a mid to high handicapper would rank these clubs. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks to all you guys that have helped build this channel, and I look forward to the next video. So from here, we'll check in with you next time.